have. I want to get qu uh, quickly to Chris Kanicki. He's a photographer with the uh, Pittsburgh affiliate of Fox Affiliate. He was back there just a couple of minutes ago, and Chris, I've seen the pictures. It looks like there's nothing there except for a hole in the ground. Uh, basically, that's right. The only thing you could see from where we were uh, was a big gouge in the earth and some broken trees. We could see some people working, walking around in the area, but from where we could see, there wasn't much left. Any large pieces of debris at all? No, there was nothing, nothing that you could distinguish that a plane had crashed there. This is one of those cases where the pictures really do tell the story that sort of the most horrifying aspect of this particular crash scene is how little debris is visible. There is a large crater in the ground, and I'm hoping that you all are seeing it as I'm talking about it, but that's really all you see is a large crater in the ground and, and just tiny, tiny bits of debris. There has been at least one report that the... Uh, investigators out there, and there are hundreds of them, as I said tonight, um, have found nothing larger than a phone book. The United States has been over the years to, with the combination of luck and the skill of anti-terrorist people, to avoid such things. What we are seeing now is nothing less than the worst nightmare that one could imagine come to life, probably worse than anyone could have imagined. You may remember that Tom Clancy wrote a novel that ends with a terrorist uh, hijacker crashing into the Capitol. The worst act of terrorist violence on American soil, the Oklahoma City bombing, killed fewer than 200 people. All we know today is that tens of thousands of people worked in that complex that has been destroyed. And I, I hate to say it this way, but this may be the day that America's luck ran out. Well, it is hard, isn't it? I mean, you look out here, and you see the Statue of Liberty to the right, and these buildings off to the left, the attacks on Washington. We don't know a lot about who's behind this or what this is all about, but the symbolism of these attacks is extraordinary. Who is responsible for this? Uh, their working thesis is that this is overseas terrorism, not domestic. They say they cannot rule out additional attacks yet to come.
evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. And no one will keep that light from shining. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. And we responded with the best of America. With the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. Our military is powerful and it's prepared. Our emergency teams are working in New York City and Washington, D.C. to help with local rescue efforts. Our first priority is to get help to those who have been injured and to take every precaution to protect our citizens at home and around the world from further attacks. The functions of our government continue without interruption. Federal agencies in Washington, which had to be evacuated today, are reopening for essential personnel tonight and will be open for business tomorrow. Our financial institutions remain strong and the American economy will be open for business as well. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. I appreciate so very much the members of Congress who have joined me in strongly condemning these attacks. And on behalf of the American people, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their condolences and assistance. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night, and God bless America.